Nudity is the state of being in which a human is without clothing. Estimates vary, but generally speaking, we think that for the first many thousand years, early modern humans were naked. Early modern humans meaning most of these guys up here, which you can see came way after cooking with fire, stone tools, and the first bipedal. If anyone doesn't know, that just means walking on two feet. So basically, as soon as we could survive hairless, we spend most of our time in our birthday suits. Behaviorally speaking, modern humans are the ones that started using jewelry, tattoos, body paint, and scarification. Behaviorally modern, meaning these were the first humans that started thinking abstractly, and were concerned with art, like music and dance, and started pondering things like symbolism. It's possible you've never considered the nuance between the words naked and nude. Naked comes from Anglo-Saxon, or Old English. That's right, the earliest form of the English language. Kinda makes sense. Anglo was spoken in England. Guess that A got turned into an E at some point. Nude, on the other hand, is derived from Norman French. If you're like me, then you spend way too long not realizing that the famous World War II battle on the beaches of Normandy were called that because they were beaches in the French region of Normandy. There are all kinds of words and phrases that English borrows from French. That movie was too cliché. He drove through the cul-de-sac. I'm having deja vu. I'm en route to his position. It's a big list. Nude tends to signify a more tasteful form of nakedness. Some might say I'm nude now. Often having cultural connections and things like the fine arts or other positive associations concerning the beauty of the human body. Nudity has all kinds of euphemisms as well. I already used birthday suit. There's also al naturel, French again. In the buff, buck naked, in the all together. And everybody's favorite, naked. Partial nudity doesn't always have a clear definition because different people have different ideas of where the line is. Is it just the genitals? Does a butt qualify? At what point is exposing the female breast considered nudity? Miley Cyrus makes a great point on this during her 2015 interview with Jimmy Kimmel. The humans aren't afraid of the human breast. It's the nipple that's the issue that I'm always so concerned. Like, I'm showing my boobs and no one has a problem, but the nipples are covered, so somehow that's okay. Why do we see certain body parts as shameful? What's inherently wrong about a body part? We'll come back to these ideas, but there are two human evolutionary processes that are relevant to nudity. I briefly mentioned the first already, which is that we went from being covered in fur to effectively hairless. Not all of us are completely hairless, as you can see. The most widely accepted explanation is that this was to dissipate body heat, which would definitely make sense with the first humans coming from Africa, which as most of you probably know, can get quite hot. This adaptation, along with the ability to sweat, allowed for dramatic enlargement of the brain, the most temperature-sensitive human organ. The second evolutionary process relevant to nudity is the sociocultural evolution of adornments and clothing. Yeah, this is what sets you apart in terms of evolution. As people became more behaviorally modern, they became more capable of self-reflection and symbolic interaction. These days you see this in many forms, a practice in humans that dates thousands of years into the past. By the way, I know that I'm censoring heavily in this video, just want to have said at some point that that doesn't come from a place of shame, but rather as a way to stay inside the confines of what YouTube finds permissible. Which ironically acts as an incredibly meta comment on the exact topic of this video. Most of what we know about the early history of clothing comes from surviving artifacts that depict higher societal classes. Clothing became a symbolic link of your status in society. So nakedness wasn't considered shameful because it was sinful or sexual, but rather because it was affiliated with a lower societal status. Slaves and laborers were often naked, which was associated with low status or a lack of dignity. Where nakedness was considered sexual or sinful was in Judeo-Christian societies. I probably don't need to do a whole lot of explaining around sensitivity to nudity in an American and European context. Both continents were heavily influenced by Abrahamic religions, which includes Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all of which view being naked as essentially negative. If you've grown up on either of these continents, as most of the viewers on this channel almost certainly will have, I don't have to tell you that public nudity is often frowned upon. Having lived in both American and European environments, my personal experience is that Americans are far more sensitive to anyone doing the no pants dance. Actually, I think that just means sex. But if you were literally dancing with no pants on, that would be frowned upon too. You don't have to look far outside of Western society to find a more casual attitude towards clotheslessness. Actually, you don't have to look outside of it at all. Take a look at ancient Greece. It's not a secret that the ancient Olympics hosted nude athletes of all kinds. And if you've grown up in a society with negative messages surrounding nudity, but respects classical Greek society, you might see or feel the occasional mixed message regarding the subject. 
This leads perfectly into why there's a lot of moral ambiguity surrounding nudity. One of the original meanings of the word nude during the 16th century, which is now obsolete, simply meant plain, open, or explicit. Take expressions like the naked truth or the bare facts. These phrases don't indicate anything morally wrong. They just mean the plain version of the truth or the simple, straightforward facts. Many that practice naturism or nudism speak of the practice in terms of returning to the innocence and simplicity of childhood. It can also be symbolic of freedom or sexual liberation, although that's not the case for everyone. Because anyone, with any given practice, typically has a unique set of reasons for behaving a certain way. These differences in approach and opinion affect the way we treat and think of people when it comes to sex and gender. In Western cultures, the article literally specifies this, shame often results from not living up to the ideals of society in regards to physical appearance. Historically, that shame has affected women more than men. It's not a flat rule, but generally speaking, there's a tendency to criticize a woman's appearance over a man's. You can see this baked right into society with sitcoms that depict husbands that are either out of shape and or dumb and wives that are conventionally attractive and or smart. And this isn't limited to old television shows. I'm not wearing a shirt and can show my nipples just to make a joke about the theme of this video. A female content creator can't do that. Nice foreshadowing, Miley. Female toplessness is the whole reason for the top freedom movement. In most of the world, the modesty of a woman is not just a social custom, but a legal enforcement. The exposure of female nipples in the US is a criminal offense in most states if done in public. This is obviously a huge source of debate and controversy among people with differing opinions, but you gotta admit, it's kind of weird that I can just post this picture of a woman breastfeeding straight into the video with no problem, but if just a little nipple peeks out. This video has been this removed as a violation of YouTube's violation policy on nudity or sexual or content. content. Sorry about that. I mean, think about it. Breasts are not inherently sexual. You don't reproduce with them. You do use them to nourish the outcome of reproduction, but they're not necessary for the reproduction itself. I'll never forget the history teacher I had at North Lake College in Irving, Texas. I was 16 whenever she pointed out to the class that one of the weirdest fetishes that humans have ever devised was of the woman's ankle. From basically the 1700s all the way to the 1900s, men only caught glimpses of women's legs due to the long dresses that were typical of the period. Since the ankle was the most likely point of exposure underneath a long dress, it became a source of sexual arousal for men throughout society. An ankle. We do the same thing with boobs. It just might seem weird to consider that if you think they're inherently sexual. That's what happens when things are deeply ingrained into your psyche. So yeah, topless boys, no problem. Topless women, social dismay. One of the most upsetting forms of nudity is imposed nudity. The most famous example of this in recent pop culture was in Game of Thrones. If you know, you know. The US did this with Iraqi prisoners in the early 2000s. For being a majority Christian nation that really puts the Bible verse turn the other cheek into a darker light. Clearly, this is a humiliating practice and acts as a way of making someone feel physically and mentally vulnerable. It's basically the Stanford Prison Experiment. One of the most famous studies in psychology where the subjects were given authority and immediately began abusing their power and those beneath them. Just so we're not ending on a downer note, the last form of nudity we'll talk about is as a form of protest. Three-year-olds being forced to take a bath aren't the only nude protesters. Adults do it too. Everything from protesting laws, to wars, to rights, to human gene editing. People have used nudity as a form of protest in many contexts. Like always, the full story is in the article itself. This one is certainly an interesting read. The final fun fact is that when Daniel Radcliffe performed nude for the play Equus, the first night that he performed live, he accidentally exposed a like button to the audience instead of his fully nude figure. It'd be great if you all exposed me to the like button. Really helps the algorithm. And with that, I'll see you guys later.